Happy Monday, everyone. This is going to be a busy week for Star Citizen with Citizen Con at the week's end, and Patch 3.24.2 will most likely go to live between now and Citizen Con. So here I'm gonna offer you three quick tips to prepare for a new patch drop before we get into the content of this video. Number one, very important. If you have in-game purchase ships, be sure to claim them. If they are destroyed or in an unknown condition, make sure they are claimed in your hangar. Doesn't matter which hangar, as long as you claim them, make sure they are ready to retrieve. If you have some in-game purchase ships that you have never used it in this patch, it's best to retrieve them and store them at least once. This way, it will reduce some of the chances of losing your in-game purchase ships when a new patch drops. Number two, if you have played 3.24.2 PTU and have your new keybind set, and here is how you can save it. And when the live patch drops, you can transfer it to your live patch. So hit escape, go to options, go to keybinds. Whether you are saving keyboard and mouse or your joystick holders keybind, just click advanced control options. Under here, click control profiles, and then look to the very top one, save control settings. So click save, test one, save. And now where to find it? Go to your Star Citizen root folder, this one right here. Find which game version you saved the keybind, whether it's live or PTU or tech preview. So click the folder I saved in the PTU, click PTU, and then click user, and then click client, click zero, click controls, and then you can find it in the mappings folder. So I have two, tasty and test one. You can copy paste them into your live folder. The third tip is before the patch goes to live, delete the current live and copy paste PTU and then rename it to live folder. That way, it can save you a lot of downloading time. The next tip, if you want to, but I seldom do this, which is to delete your shader folder in Star Citizen. And where to find it? This is the root location for your shader folder. I'm gonna post this under the description of this video, so you can just copy paste it. So basically, you hit Windows Start. At the search bar, you copy paste this, and then click this folder and then just delete everything in here if you want to. Okay, that's all for the tips. Now let's move on to today's topic, which is the power management. So first of all, this is the old power management system, which is in the current PU. So in this power triangle, you have weapon, engine, and shield. Whichever function you give power to, it will draw power from the other two functions. I'm giving full power to weapon and my shield and my thruster has zero power. Or you can take all power from engine and evenly divide them to your weapon or your shield. Or you can unevenly divide it. So whichever you put the power center on, all these three numbers add together is always 100%. And you can set some very easy keybind to manage that, especially during combat. In the new power management system, I remember in the beginning of the 3.24.2 patch, the power management is a mess, but I think CAG listened to our opinions and they did something. As of right now, this current PTU patch, the power management here is very similar to the power triangle that we are using in the current PU. Let me demonstrate it. But before we do that, let's set some keybinds first. I'm gonna set three easy keybinds, and I'm going to use the arrow keys. First is engine increase. I'm gonna use the up arrow, and then engine set to max. Also, I'm gonna use up arrow. So basically you tap is to increase one bar, and you hold is to set it to max. So that's engine and shield. I'm gonna use the right arrow to increase and hold right arrow to set it to max. And the weapon, left arrow to increase and hold left arrow to set it to max. And the down arrow is to reset. So basically I'm setting this keybind exactly same as what we use in Elite Dangerous. Now, let's take a look. 
if I'm giving full power to my shield by holding the right arrow. Now you can see, I don't have to manually bring down the power from my engine and my guns. It's automatically assigned by holding the right arrow. So CAG did something that's very similar to our old power triangle. So now let's reset. I'm gonna give full power to engine, which is up arrow. Now you can see it's drawing power automatically from shield and weapon and giving full power to my engine. Reset. Now I'm gonna give full power to my weapon. Left arrow. Now you can see it's automatically drawing power from my shield and my engine and giving full power to my weapon. However, there is a problem. I still want some power on my engine or my shield. By giving full power to my weapon, I have extra six pips of power that I don't need. So I don't know what's going on here because if I give full power to my shield, you can see I don't have any extra power left. It's zero out of 30 or I give full power to my engine, zero out of 30. I still have power for my guns and still have power for my shield. But when I give full power to my weapon, it's got extra six units of power left. So I have to manually assign it to my engine. One bar, two, three, four, five. So this is something we need to pay attention to. I don't know if it's just this ship or it's similar situation as with other ships. Because especially during combat, if you give full power to your weapon, and then you have extra power left, but you need those power for your engines or your shield, but they're just extra power sitting there doing nothing. And it will give you a disadvantage in combat. So that's the first point I want to make. The new power management is very similar to the power triangle in the old system now, thanks to CIG's tweaking, but when you give full power to weapon, you need to be careful with this. You still need to manually manage the rest of the six units of power, at least for this ship. So until now, this is a very simple power management system with only four keybinds that you need to set. But if you want to get to more detailed, then you would have to set more keybinds for it. So let's check out the detailed power management. It's getting a little complicated, even for me, but I'm trying to make it as clear as possible. So let's start with the weapon power first. Look at my weapon capacitor here. If I give full power to weapon, this is an A2 Hercules. So I'm using M7A cannon. So size five M7A cannon, 15 rounds. Okay, I'm gonna lower my weapon with one pip. One pip lowered, now it's 14. Lower another one, it's 12. Lower another one, it's 10. Lower another one, it's nine. Another one, seven. Another one, six. Another one, five. Another one, three. Another one, just one. Okay, back to full power to weapon. Now I'm going to fire my weapons, all of them. Watch the recharge time for my weapon. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Really fast. Three pips to my weapon. Now I fired all my guns. Now look at the recharging time. 0 to 1, to 2, to 3, to 4, to 5. Very slow. So the amount of power you give to your weapon will greatly influence how many rounds you can fire and the charge rate of your laser weapons. Now let's check out the shield. So this is my shield display here. I'm gonna give full power to my shield. Now I'm gonna turn my shield off and turn my shield on. Shields on. Check the recharging time. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20.
100 for each side, so total we have 400. Now it's charging pretty fast. Withdraw all power from shield. Now I'm gonna turn the shield off and turn shield on. Shields on. Two, three, four, five, six. Well, you get the point. So this is how slow the shield power recharges when you don't have enough power for your shield. Of course, this is nothing new for this patch, but I just want to show you the comparison. Now let's check out the engines. Okay, so I just give full power to my engine. Now I'm going to use all my boost. So the number right here is the boost amount. Okay, my boost is 0%. Now it's charging. It's pretty quick. 19, 20, 21, 23. Now if I draw all the power away from my engine, all of a sudden my boost charging slows down a lot. Again, this is nothing new. But I just want to include it in this video in case if you're new to the power management system. So based on this, we're going to be managing our power pip by pip. So for example, I'm lowering my weapon pip by pip. So you can see I'm lowering pip by pip, but the power in my capacitor is not allocated to other systems automatically. So it's just sitting there inside my capacitor. Now, I can manually increase my engine by a certain amount or my shield by a certain amount. Pip by pip, pip by pip. Of course, during combat, this is not a preferable way to do it. However, during combat, if you want to increase certain power pip by pip, it will automatically allocate it. For example, I want to increase one pip of my engine. One pip. So it will draw power one pip from my shield and then give it to my engine automatically. One key bind. So another one. Now it draws one pip from my weapon and give it to my engine. Okay, increase another engine. It reduce my shield more. And then one more. It reduce my weapon more. But if I want to reduce my engine power, it will not automatically allocate those reduced pips to other systems. So in summary of this video, there are two types of keybinds you can set for the new power management system. One is the simple way for keybind system. And don't forget to set the same keybind for increasing a certain power and set it to max. So these two can be the same keybind. Tap it to increase one pip, hold it to set it to max. And the next keybind system is the more complex ones. So I set to my joystick and I used seven keybinds. So for example, the engine, one keybind to increase engine power and the same keybind to set it to max. That's keybind number one. Keybind number two is one keybind to decrease engine power and the same keybind to hold it to set engine power to minimum. So two keybinds for engine, two keybinds for shield, two keybinds for weapon, and then one keybind to reset. Total seven keybinds. That's for more complex power management. So during combat, it is best to use the simple keybind system. One button to set everything to max. But pay attention to when you give full power to weapon because somehow it take out almost all the power from shield and engine and just sitting in your capacitor without allocating them automatically. So that's it. If you have confused enough by now, then I have done my job confusing you. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.